So welcome to the Londiani lab. It is uh, a lab that deals with the pathology and entomology in forestry. Uh, it deals with the removal uh, or extraction of uh, some sap that will help um, in the bio uh, control of pests. So we are looking for environment friendly um, controls for pest management and diseases. Uh, here is an ongoing experiment deals with the different levels of titonia extract in termite control. Um, we have uh, an oven, an electric furnace. We've done most of our carbonization work there. We've tried and uh, gotten the uh, calorific value of different uh, forest trees. It's high pressure. Then we have a weighing balance on the far end and these are other ovens up to the far end. So uh, when we look at bamboo propagation our next best step is to do micro propagation as I mentioned earlier. It's the new age tissue culture. Uh, when we, we we think of tissue culture, we think of having sufficient germplasm, quality germplasm for bamboo propagation. We believe we have the capacity to do the tissue culture here. We, we have the technical stuff, we have biotechnologists, we have breeders. So even after the tissue culture from the lab, we know there's somebody who can take care of them and do even more multiplication, even if it's clonal. So, we, we know we have the capacity of tissue culture here. And, uh, uh, have you tried this uh, bamboo tissue culture? Uh, bamboo tissue culture we haven't tried, but we've read a lot about it, and we, we are convinced uh, from our earlier practices we can develop this and upscale and actually do it here. Okay. Do you yes. need any capacity or do you see sort of uh, training yeah, I would be done to this part or we are set to go if if it's a training so that uh, we can be we can enhance our capacity, we can just do a refresher, but we are not saying we want a full course. 
because uh, I know the capacities here, the people who have been trained to do that, they've done on other species, it's only bamboo that has not been done. Yes, yeah. My name is uh, Omuan Vincent Samuel, and uh, these are my colleagues. Uh, this one is called Stephen, Stephen Bamboo, and uh, the other one is Sebastian. Uh, basically, uh, we do uh, especially craft. We are craftsmen. Uh, for eco green bud here uh, it is made out of pure bamboo and uh, before we start uh, making this uh, something like this we we meditate on it first we take a picture a realistic picture and then we start measuring taking all the measurements so that it might come out the way we, we need it to come out. So uh, as it has been made here, it should be, it should be hanging uh, uh, as the end results. The end results uh, uh, will, it will end up hanging under these, uh, this bulb holder will fix up a bulb inside here, which now uh, I think uh, you understand there. Mm. So the tools that we use are uh, this uh, a hand a hand drill. We we use it to pierce, make holes into the bamboo. Uh, for example, I put just yeah. yeah. This is the way we do it. So there is uh, another example of uh, how these holes have been made. You can see the holes which uh, have been used to decorate this bamboo. So these are uh, things that we we basically need them to we we work on on them just because we love them. Oh, my name is Jacqueline Namadi, CEO of Mianzi Tangulizi, which is a baby to Echo Green, the business wing. Uh, I'm the project coordinator under the INBA initiative, the Dutch Sino initiative in Busia County. Echo Green was started six years ago. It's six years old currently. And our students who used to be on the internship at Kenya, Kenya Forest Service, and our patron, the late, late Mr. James Were, he brought in us an issue of bringing back to the society what you've been able to learn. And together we thought, what can we do bet, best, be, better to our motherland? So we thought, okay, now that we are done schooling, the best we can do is actually return back to the community that has entrusted in us and has taken us to school. And looking at the forest cover in Busia, which was below 2% and has been below 2% for a long time, we thought that the government alone 
uh, the Kenya Forest Service and possibly the county government might not be having enough to work and to put on table to bring back a 10% forest cover by the year 2030. So all we did, we thought of a best way and a best approach to come in and help our county and also help our country achieve this. So we thought of one thing uh, that could be able to hit that target by 2030, we are looking at uh, our various trees and we are like, oh, using trees to get to this forest cover, it will really be a miracle because it might not be possible. The possibility of most of the trees growing up under this harsh climatic condition is something that is just not workable within that time frame. That is how we landed on bamboo, one as a grass, and just a fast growing grass. So we thought of if we are able to introduce bamboo in the county, and if you're able to introduce bamboo at an individual level, whereby farmers, people will volunteer their lands and start planting bamboo, not only for conservation purposes, but also for economic purposes. Because one thing we are looking into, we, we thought of the scarcity of land. What we have in Busia, most of our hills are bare. And the condition, the climatic condition on our hills makes it impossible sometimes for you to even grow a tree. First of all, you'll have the termites eating the trees and then the wild animals. So the, the, the survival becomes almost like impossible. And as long as we are having the hills and the marshy lands bare, attaining that forest cover becomes something impossible. Uh, my name is uh, Subash Sonigra. I, uh, I am the manager at uh, Ecopole Industries Kenya Limited uh, in Limuru. Uh, uh, thank you, first of all, for uh, you coming on behalf of INBAR to, to see what uh, Ecopole is doing with a specific emphasis on uh, the bamboo. Uh, if you look at uh, our product, the, the Ecopole Composite Pole, 50% composition is actually the bamboo. Uh, when I say bamboo, uh, everybody is aware that uh, bamboo is a very strong uh, organic material and uh, that, uh, that is one of the reasons why we, we say that our pole is an eco-friendly pole. The, the eco pole was actually engineered and designed in Norway. And uh, the reason was that uh, the, the founder was actually doing uh, something at one of the refugee camps. And uh, he realized that uh, the concrete uh, was not easy when it comes to logistics, uh, transporting and all that. So he went back to Norway and uh, actually sat down with some of the engineers to, to find out which product can help. And that is the time uh, it was realized that bamboo, uh, the fibers of the bamboo are actually very strong uh, to, to come up with uh, uh, an ecopole. So that is where the idea came up and then the other compositions came up. Currently we, we use uh, the, the lowland varieties uh, of uh, the giant. Uh, we use uh, vulgaris and uh, the strictas. These are the three varieties which uh, we have tested and uh, helps us in, in achieving uh, our uh, eco-friendly product. Uh, my name is Franklin Keremi and I'm a landscape architect working at Kunkwe Design Initiative. Um, KDI has been uh, working in Kibera for the past 10 years, working in, with vulnerable communities to advance equity. We, we have um, different services, uh, design, community, uh, research and planning. And um, I work under design and build department where we partner with communities 
uh, living in informal settlement here in Kibera uh, to improve their derelict spaces around them and transform them into public spaces that have amenities that community need, but also helping with um, environmental remediation. In the period we have worked here, we've uh, utilized and applied the use of bamboo. Um, and the first, very first project we applied uh, bamboo in uh, um, building the community hall. Uh, so building the shade structure, but also uh, the windows and doors of the building. And this really helped with ventilation and lighting into the building. But we also planted uh, bamboo on the stream bank to help with stabilizing and uh, protecting the from uh, soil erosion. Uh, over the years, we've then also used uh, bamboo to build a, a playground for children. And we had, had then built a community a shade structure and the current the place that we are, which is Anu Academy, uh, for the windows, doors, and ventilations. The last 20 or so years, we've seen a growth in the infrastructure in the country. Buildings have come up. And with buildings, we need furniture, we need flooring material, and bamboo had started growing up, uh, coming and growing a lot of interest. And we, we were importing a lot of bamboo finished products from China. And uh, one of them is a flooring board. And beautiful timber, beautiful composite of bamboo. Um, that is replacing timber because right now timber is very expensive so that was one of them making partitions of bamboo making curtains you know the products are endless but we were now importing much more bamboo products we had even some synthetics rambu you know made of plastic sort of like you know but we say you know these are things which can be made locally so how can we introduce toothpicks we were importing toothpicks we are importing toothpicks Yet, we had also toothpick industries in the country, made from pines uh, and also even uh, bamboo. There was a factory that was doing that in, uh, um, in Nakuru many years ago, but they stopped making it because they, it, first of all, getting the bamboo was stopped, and then also it was a lot of manual work. And uh, so those are some of the, the markets that were there. The other markets that we found, around the tea growing areas, people make baskets for picking tea, and that was an easy easy thing to do and uh, you get the bamboo and once you, you harvest the young ones for you to be able to weave them, you'll get the bamboo baskets. So those were the kind of um, markets that we were finding. But we thought that if we, we were to compete with other uh, countries in terms of this multi-billion dollar industry of the bamboo, then we need to up our game. We need to increase the bamboo on farm. We need to have quality assurance of the bamboo. And in that quality assurance, the program was able to, to, to develop uh, six standards with the Kenya Bureau of Standards. We customized uh, a few standards from elsewhere and were able to customize them to Kenya. So we are six. In fact, earlier on today, I was even in a technical committee looking at other, trying to finish uh, some two standards on bamboo flooring and bamboo furniture. Um, those are the things that will guide the industry because with standards, then that's when you can compete in the market. This engagement focuses on goal 12. Bamboo poles, fiber and engineered bamboo can be used for most purposes where timber is used. Bamboo is woody grass, not a tree, and is selectively harvested without harming the ecosystem or contributing to deforestation. Bamboo poles, fiber and engineered bamboo can be used for most purposes where timber is used today and in some cases offers better performance than some timber products. My name is Alex Njenje. I'm the director of Bamboo Craft uh, based in Eldoret. We are handling a wide range of bamboo uh, items that uh, a variety of, of bamboo products. 
from chairs to beds to corner stand to picture frames based on our clientele. And uh, currently we 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 having uh, like four workers who are really committed to the workshop, handling all sorts of uh, bamboo products in Eldoret. Bamboo furniture is a very unique uh, product, and it's it's a market that is a bit challenging in terms of getting the materials, having the right uh, furniture that suits the clientele. Uh, if you have good products, uh, people will go for it. And there are people who also make other furnitures using uh, timber. So for us to hit the market, we were able now to sit down and see what is it that we can make that make other people come for these products. Two, uh, there was the issue of uniqueness. Most items are made out of timber. Rarely will you find clans or, or, or people making bamboo furnitures. So for us, we thought it was a good idea because there was a ready market for it. There's no competition. And we decided to make something that can, can, can appeal to the society and a bit unique in the, in the market. Kwa majina naitwa Alma Faith. Niko in charge ya weaving na niko na wenzangu hapa Sarah na Fanis. Kutoka kwa hii bambu tunatengeneza vitu mingi. Tutatengeneza baskets, lampshades, flower vessels, dust bins, trays na ndio upatikane na e product ndio wanze kushona tuko na tools. This one is called a splitter. This one is a scissor, hand drill, and a tape measure. Before you start, we also have a knife. Before you start kutengeneza hii, tukona hii. Hii pengile, inaitua pengile, utamesha, ujue, ikona urefu gani. Ndo itakugaidu, kitu enye unataka na kushona. So kwa hii, before wanze kutengeneza, utatumia hii splitter, we split. After kumaliza, utachukia, utachukua kisu, wanze kutoa chane. atapea huyu mwenzake ataweka kwenye mguu hapo apige randa kuimeka kwa smooth ndio iko itumike rahisi wakati wa kusuka yeye anapiga randa akishamaliza kupiga randa atazianika kwenye jua zikauke ndio iko nyepesi ukianza kusuka haitakupatia hard time bambu it's easier bambu inapatikana hapa rais it's a walking distance just here kutafuta bambu sio mbali na ba, the type of bambu you use for yenye inapatikana kwa hii region yetu ni vulgaris ndio tunatumia kufanya wivi yeah. jina yangu naitwa bonface minor eh ama bambu artisan na deal na interior and exterior bambu product for example furniture eh, and handicrafts Okay, nili choose bambu kwa sababu bambu ni mimi napenda environment na kuanga conscious about environment. Bambu ni versatile meaning inaweza tengeneza a lot of products and then ni sustainable and a renewable natural resource. So nili decide bambu kwa sababu nilikuwa naangalia at least itakuwa na impact kwa both economy na environment. Uh, pia tunatengeneza necklaces na bracelets na small pieces za bambu alafu pia tuna uh, utilize these pieces za bambu unaweza jenga charcoal charcoal uh, eco friendly charcoal uh, so currently ni hizo interior and exterior products 
and then kitu ya kando tunatengeneza ni kama charcoal yeah alafu uh, when you plant one one bamboo ile nini you know they grow like 300 poles eh? unajua mti ukipanda moja ina grow moja and ukikata hiyo mti imeisha but bamboo the more you cut it the more it sprout so nikiangalia alafu it take, takes within a very short time it may mature We currently we get our uh, bamboo from the local farmers around the the western and the Nyanza uh, provinces of this country uh, because they have a lot along the riparian. Uh, we we are closely doing this with uh, the help of uh, Kefri uh, because uh, you realize that Kefri uh, is is the provider of the seedlings so the qualities and the species which we require uh, they give us the assistance to tell us where and where can we get the product of bamboo which we need if if you do really look into it and uh, re realistically uh, then then i just want to give you a few examples first ecopol is uh, a uv protected so it doesn't get affected with our tropical heat Uh, second it is uh, it, it, it is not uh, affected by termites or uh, the, the birds uh, or rodents where which is a usual case where you have uh, you know some of these uh, wooden poles affected by termites and everything the most important factor it does not get affected with salt so there is no corrosion The biggest benefit is uh, for an ecopole is that uh, the carbon footprint. That is now the most important. If you look at the other products, uh, the, the carbon uh, footprints are quite uh, massive. Look at the, the bamboo factor when it comes to carbon print. So it, it's got numerous advantage. And the biggest advantage is it doesn't break into two and the life the life is between 20 to 50 years and at the end of that lifespan everything is practically reusable the hdp can go back into the plastic industry for the re reusing the, the the bamboo inside with the polyurethane can actually be used as a briquette for furnaces so nothing really goes to waste namaka yenyewe ni yenye natoka kwa bambu na ni safi sana tena aishi kwa jiko hata moto haiwezi kazima haraka kitu kingine yenye natengeneza ni toothpick nimeanza kutengeneza toothpick na huwa natumia kisu si ati niko na mashini nyingine yenye natumia natumia kisu na sani pepa lakini uzito wenye naona kisu naweza hata kunikata kidole sasa mki Serikali kini ikijaribu kunisaidia hata mashini ya kutengeneza toothpick naweza kuwa ni raisi kwa kufanya kazi juu hii ni kazi naweza fanya na watoto naweza elimisha wamama wenzangu na tutoke kwa umaskini sasa mimi naelimisha watu wa Busia watu wa Butla tupande bambu kwa wingi juu ni mradi mzuri si mradi wa kurudisha mtu kwa umaskini Since we've raised, we've raised the seedlings a tune of uh, up to 10,000 in our nursery. We have uh, some challenges also in in a to in a, in a, in a to phase up to cure ground. Uh, one of the challenges is about procurement of seedlings that we have, but we wish that um, also our country government to support us in by selling uh, by uh, buying these uh, seedlings so that they they give to the farmers hiyo ndio challenge yenye kubwa yenye tuko naye upper ground that we wish that uh, county government na any other stakeholders wenye wanaona ni sawa 
waweze kununua seedlings from us so that waweze kuwauzia pia wapatie farmers waweze kupanda so that tufanye mambo ya bambu product ikue kitu ya ya dhamana katika our community thank you so much challenges zile nimeface kwanza kama hapa sasa hivi tuseme hapa ndi kama ghetto hapa unajua unajua Eastlands Nairobi ni ghetto ni kama tu ghetto yani uh, market ya easy products uh, aiko sana kwa pande za Eastlands unapata market yake strategic market yake iko hiyo pande nyingine kama Westlands Karen huko so unapata hapa ile challenge tuko nayo one thing sina showroom unaona alafu ukiweka products pale nje unapata zinaharibiwa na jua ama ama dust and then unaweza okay sana sana pia nategemea wateja wa online platform eh? so unapata mteja uh, ukimwekea product uh, anataka kuja kuona labda ile place huko akikuja one uko tu shanti shanti hivi aku trust labda anaweza ataka kupatia job interior kama ya ya ya, ya 200000 anaona inditoe eh, down payment ya 50% kwa mtu wako mali so hiyo ni challenge moja atuko kwa place strategic and then another challenge pia ni eh, awareness bado bambu watu wajui bambu ni nini so unapata mtu na anaona tu bambu tu ni ni, ni kitu ni kitu ya ka, yani anaona ni kama ni kama si kitu ya maana unajua bado watu wajajua bambu ndio the hardest wood plant on earth in fact bambu ni ngumu kuliko mbao zote mahogany na hizo chemfire zile zinakuwa the hardest wood bambu in fact we don't compare it na na, na mbao tunaikompare na na mild steel ni stronger than mild steel but watu wajui bado watu wako na ile misconception bambu ni kama zile vitu za mahindi unajua ni family moja na na manyasi so bado tujaweza kulingana na atujaweza ku reach kwa watu tueleze exactly bambu yeah so mine is uh, to encourage others now the only ch there are challenges that we are facing uh, First of all, this place was uh, a little bit uh, swampy. We had no idea that uh, a lot of water seems to suppress the, the roots of bamboo. So it took time for me to open the drainages at a real good cost uh, for it to be the way it is. It was carpeted with some very thick grass. We removed that grass and literally did some digging with the people here all the way up to the other end. And uh, it is bearing fruit. I think you can see some still looking a little bit yellow. I think we are discovering that uh, there is need to put uh, manure, animal manure. Uh, we are going to do that to ensure that uh, this survives. Now, these are very young ones. I'm sure in the next one year, it will cause, it'll be a whole lot of uh, a difference. So for us, is to thank others. For the county government of Busia, which is uh, doing also a lot to promote bamboo growing, I'm sure it is not only here, but all over. I think uh, today we are uh, told bamboo is the way to go. Some people I've seen are also using it for firewood. Um, I'm sure that uh, if it will be a matter of asking for carbon points, I'm sure I should be able to get uh, soon if you'll give me direction. But key for, for a farmer for me, I would like to see a situation where I can uh, visit maybe a place that will show uh, the value chain. How can I see where people are able to see value chain? I'm told places like Ethiopia are able to do a lot of value chain so that we understand how to utilize this because the market is still not yet uh, open. There is need that we be able to understand how we can market this. And the moment people are able to know how best it can be utilized, I'm sure many more will be able to get the city and grow and uh, without fear now that they can, uh, we can share the resources there is. That's great. That's amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So any have, questions? Um, so far, so good. How are the youth receptive to bamboo in the area? The, the youths have been very receptive. Initially, by the way, some people would come and uh, pluck away what I'd planted. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is that aspect of curiosity. Mm -hmm. But we say there is no need of uh, checking it. Mm -hmm. Just let it grow. Yeah. We shall be able to share. And then they are the ones who turn up mm -hmm. to weed. Some people will just tell you, 
for, I, I have bamboo money. Mm. And now bamboo has become the talk. Mm. Are you going to bamboo or are you going to Yashamba? Mm. So either you are going to bamboo or you are going to Yashamba. Yeah. So the youth are receptive. They understand why we have uh, this kind of bamboo. Yeah. The, some have been able to see what the difference that we have and we are sharing them with the uh, knowledge from Eco Green mm. that that bamboo can last up to 50 years if well treated. Mm. So that is the way to go. Mm. I'm sure nobody would like to keep repeating, touching and doing that kind of thing. Mm. It can be used for iron sheets. Mm. So that is the way, the direction we shall uh, show them. But uh, that value chain is important mm -hmm. for them to learn other than just using it as poles. Mm. Uh, they, they all to understand that they, those can be used for making uh, floor tiles. Mm. They can be used for making uh, uh, roof uh, ceilings and all that. I'm sure once they see that and we're able to utilize machinery for that, they'll be able to join in. By promoting the planting and cultivation of bamboo, we can help to achieve these targets and SDG 1. Bamboo can be grown in marginal land, which may not be under cultivation and may not have existing land tenure. Promoting the cultivation of bamboo therefore helps to provide the poor with natural resources that they have access to and ownership over. Trying to test bamboo in the different agroecological regions was now to, to publicize it and have farmers plant it. One particular project that stands out that was done, um, I think in 2006, and it was done in Migori and Homa Bay. Uh, and in those counties, those, uh, the farmers had been told to plant tobacco. And tobacco was not doing well. And not only was that, they didn't get livelihoods out of it, but it was now destroying their, uh, their, um, their, their environment. Because for tobacco, you have to cut trees for, for curing it. So this project was turning uh, tobacco growers into bamboo growers. So we had about, um, about 20 hectares or so. Farmers were able to set aside one hectare to just see. Because what had happened even to the environment, after they cut their trees, streams stopped you know, uh, coming out and even bubbling out. So the, the land became disseminated because of that, people cutting down their trees and growing the tobacco. So that project, um, the farmers now grew the bamboo and they could see at least there was some environmental change. And uh, their challenge now was where do they sell the bamboo? Because the project ended ab ab abruptly. And uh, so that was one of the challenges. So. Even as we continued uh, raising awareness of people planting bamboo, the importance of bamboo in terms of uh, soil, um, uh, you know, holding the soil, riverine uh, protection, land restoration, all that thing, all those things. People are saying, okay, we have the bamboo, but what do we do with it? You know, where are the factories? And that's why I'm excited about the Dutch Sino project, because not only did this project come in as, at, at an ap appropriate time, because not only was it looking at uh, supporting poverty reduction, and, and that was, poverty reduction was, was a way of trying to get livelihoods, raising livelihoods on farms. Granted, farmers' lands have also reduced, but we are saying you can even grow bamboo even uh, as, as boundary. But if you have 100 farmers in one area, that can create a market within an area, even if you have just a few clumps within your area. My name is uh, Andrew Misoy, uh, from Kosoyo location, um, Nandi County. Uh, first, I want to thank you for uh, having me here. 
ili niweze kuwa introduce our, our project na also to tell you what we have achieved so far one uh, first taka niweze kusema ya kwamba uh, this initiative is a self help group called Koroshot whereby is a pool of members uh, 20 members it started way back in 2000 2000 whereby tulikuwa na members um, uh, 20 uh, kina mama walikuwa tisa wanaume ni 11 tulikuwa tunatuta chai kwa sababu our locality is where uh, tea planting is being dominated so what we did we started by raising seedlings selling to farmers young farmers uh, alafu before that took a move to seedlings tree seedlings tukaanza tena kututa tree seedlings tukiwauzia also farmers and other stakeholders uh, when you are interested so after that uh, we we had a training also pertaining bamboo and we went for that training i remember it was uh, back in 2014 but before that we had earlier tulikuwa tumejua mambo ya bamboo kidogo uh, tulikuwa tumesha already planned that is i think 2013 when we were going now for this training and the county government iliweza kutupeleka we went uh, actually and tukatukua train some of the group members tukaenda kule uh, wakatu train on uh, propagation of bamboo and the importance of this bamboo so since our place ilikuwa more swampy in our place we initially planted this bamboo uh, tukapanda almost uh, uh, seven plants na ilikuwa ina grow very fast we saw the importance also of the training that we went because apa ilikuwa swampy uh, because of its bamboo ukipanda iko na mass fibrous roots so ilikuwa inashikilia kwanza mnyonyoko wa, wa, wa udongo kwa sababu our uh, place our terrain ime, ime, ime lala kidogo topography ime lala. so ikaweza kushika ile mchanga that is because of the bamboo na iko na mass fibrous root tukaona hiyo ni advantage number 1 sasa mnyonyoko wa, wa maji inapokuja haiwezi kubeba mchanga secondly because this bamboo is a fast growing grass ina mea kwa haraka sana na importance yake inatumika asawa kwa mambo ya, ya value addition ya carpentry na other 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 furniture issues uh, after that now raising we are ready to kaanza kupanda zetu to ka increase from seven plants to almost 50 and at kona ni vizuri sana ili when we are giving information to other people they also the first thing the group has done they are wamefanya yao wameweza kupanda yao so that is the first phase yenye tuliweza kufanya secondly uh, what we did also we went further ahead na kuweza kujaribu kupata more skills on the importance of bamboo na tukaweza kujua ya kwamba this bamboo uh, kwanza uh, environment maalum umefanda because of its mass in a regulate oxygen hewa inakuwa safi na it is a cool, a cool place to, to, to be third tukaweza kujua on that note tukaweza kujua pia zi bamboo zinaweza kufanya furnitures furnitures na one of the achievement in a group tulianza ku engage after that ile 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 bamboo kukua sasa ku, kuwa kubwa what we did sasa tukaanza ku kufanya value addition of this and actually that is one of the achievement achievement that we did we have several other other uh, achievement that we wish to do but uh, since tumeanza na ile tumeanza we see it is very important kwa sababu tumeanza sasa kutengeneza vikapu you know kwa sababu tuko eneo ya majani chai people have ile ma, ile vikabu ya kuchunia ku pluck chai na kuweka ndani so we saw that uh, tuanzie hiyo kwa sababu that is where now the people from within will will buy and see how our products are making so that is the first achievement that we did and we are still doing hiyo ndio kazi yenye sasa sisi 
baada ya kuraise kwa nasari tunauza lakini initially tusha panda zetu ambayo tuna tuna harvest na kufanyia value addition kwa kuweza kutengeneza hizi hizi uh, vikapu za kuchunia kwanza kabisa naitwa Robert Aput kutoka Kibrong Wetla hii ni kikundi ambacho tulianza mwaka wa 96 tulianza 96 tu ni nini ile tufanya tuanze kikundi ni kwamba hii sehemu yetu mvua ilikuwa inaanza kupotea na tulinotisa tulinotisi ya kwamba ni kwa sababu ya miti ilikuwa imekatwa na watu walikuwa wamelima hii wetland yetu so walipoanza kulima wakati huo mimi nilikuwa kijana nikaanzisha tukaitana tuka tukakuwa kama kikundi tulipokuwa kama kikundi tukasema tuka tunataka tuanze kupanda kuweka miche ya kupanda tukaanza na isi miche ya genyeji yeah, indigenous tukaiweka tuta tukipanda tukiweka tukipanda wakati huo 2000 watu wa LFM wakaingia wakaona ni kazi nzuri tulikuwa tunafanya wakati fun wakati pia pesa yenye tulinunua na ase tubes na sisi wenyewe tukatafuta mbegu na wakati drain na maneno ya nasaris tukafanya hiyo vizuri tukapanda miti ilikuwa miti 200000 tumepanda along the wetland alafu hii wetland pia ilikuwa shamba vile unaona hivi ilikuwa watu walikuwa wamelima mahindi so ndio tukafanya hiyo awareness tukafanya mapping county government wakakuja wakafanya mapping watu wa shamba ya wenyewe itoke na shamba ya wetland iweze kuonekana wakati huo sasa ndio tukaanza ku rehabilitate ndio nyasi sikaanza kumea tena wakati tulipokuwa tunaenda kwa kupanda hizo miti ya kinyeji tukiambia watu tukiadvocate maneno ya watu kutoa kwa mbu kwa wetland kwa sababu watu wengine walikuwa wameanza kupanda pluka kwa wetland so hizo tukakata tukasitoa kule tulipokata wetland ikakuwa mzuri tukaanza kufikiria sasa in 20 2016 tukaanza maneno ya bambu Mimi kwa majina ni Bitus Odenyo Mruai Mimi natoka katika sub county Busia county Butula sub county Lugulu ward Buluan sub location na Bumahud village Mimi nilianza kama mkulima wa bambu mwaka wa 2016 na 16 Nilitangulia kupanda bambu moja huko mtoni mwishowe nikarudi hiyo ikakuwa ikakuwa nikaanza tena kupanda ya pili ya pili nilipanda 32 Kwa hizo 32 vile imeanza kukua nikasema hapana Sasa nijifu akaanza ku kudifundisha jinsi ya kutengeneza seedling. Nikatengeneza seedling. Kwa sasa hii niko na seedling zenye ziko tayari kuuzwa. My name is Patrice Lumumba and uh, where we are standing we are on the Busia side and bordering Siaya. We are standing in a place where uh, there is a farm or bamboo farm about 20 acres is uh, a farm that we started uh, 2019 June that's when we planted this bamboo and the reason why we planted this bamboo is because of our conservation of the ecosystem and the river system this place sometimes ago when we were young people used to have upwelling springs and it was all forested but today it is no longer there Early mornings you'll see varieties of birds in this place all over there are uh, about uh, I usually count about uh, 40 to 50 um, uh, wild uh, guinea fowls they are now around i've seen monkeys starting to come back these are changes that we are able to see now planting bamboo uh, is uh, we are put it as a um, something that will uh, be able to show the people around what the importance of this bamboo is very many of the locals are asking why are you growing bamboo is that food to us is it going to help us but uh, bamboo uh, from my uh, understanding as a person who has gone to school it has very many 
um, uses. We have already said about the conservation of uh, this area. So uh, in construction, this is an area that used to use, uh, uh, do well with the grass touched houses because of the heat when it is hot. And I'm very sure that with the coming of, uh, when we start uh, putting up bamboo like this, it is going to really uh, show people the direction that we are going to use. Now, uh, as we go along, but for all, let me be able to thank those who have enabled us to be able to plant this bamboo. We have uh, the International Bamboo and uh, Rantan Organization, INBRA. We have the uh, County Government of Busia. We have Kenya Forest uh, Research Institute. We have Eco Green. They have been very, very supportive and visiting this place every now and then. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands and the Netherlands University, they have all been here. This place has been visited by none other than uh, the, uh, the Minister of uh, Environment. Um, plus the governor was here with the whole team. We have had very many people, some group came from Italy, came to visit this place, and we are grateful. It is giving people an idea that there is importance in the bamboo. And I think my understanding is the malleability of bamboo is also high. It is not something to be taken for granted. I'm sure that when people will understand that it's a long lasting uh, kind of plant, it's a grass, all right, but stronger as I've seen in the in the media, it's indicating that it's even uh, close or stronger to metals com comparatively. So ours is to we shall encourage people to know the importance and to plant. If you extend your eyes left and right, you'll see there are very many open fields. And uh, just across in front of me, there is a river there, but you can see somebody has dug all the way up to that river. Now, people seem to, because of uh, pressure on the land, people seem to be moving towards the, uh, the water sources. Now, forgetting that uh, the fertility that we have near the river is because of the very many leaves swept all the way from upstream into that area to create the kind of environment or the kind of uh, manure that is available. So we hope that this will help people be able to see the way forward and that we are going to convince others not only to grow bamboo, but also to grow other uh, crops as we have done. If you look ahead of me, you can see a forest. Those are indigenous trees with medicinal tree, uh, uh, trees. We have planted a lot of them, almost a thousand or something like that, just to show people the difference there, that there is. And um, I think uh, we have, it, this place has given people a lot of jobs. To date, since June last year, I've spent 758,000 just putting people on the farm. That basically means I've provided jobs because I usually put about uh, 30 to 40 people a day. If I do it for uh, 30 days, then if you calculate some, uh, it tells you the amount that I pay. I pay people around 400 a day. There are people who are able to live with a thousand shillings every week because of the amount of work they do or uh, others even 2,000 a week. So it is providing employment to the people. It is providing food for the, those who are able to buy and put on the table. It is equally occupying people with some uh, economic activity, so they are, they are not uh, idle. Bamboo farming in Kenya is huge and has transformed the lives of ordinary farmers, turning them into self-made millionaires in record time. Indeed, bamboo farming is one of the most profitable in Kenya. A bamboo harvest can bring in millions of Kenya shillings in a month. Kenya is slowly turning into a bamboo state, having deepened its efforts to planting maturing bamboo in selected catchment regions. True, the Kenyan government's effort is mainly directed by its desire to reduce the country's susceptibility to the damaging effects of climate change. Um, INBA has, um, has a nodal office in East Africa, which is based in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. It also has an office in Cameroon, Central Africa, and also Ghana. So we are looking at having a continent embracing bamboo in a big way and supporting livelihoods from seedling growing all the way to, to, to the manufacturing. We have very good stories of people who are growing uh, the seedlings um, and their livelihoods. In just three years, a, farm, um, a lady farmer in Busia, uh, so to, uh, if I can just mention her, she's... She's, I think, sold over 100,000 seedlings. 
that money has helped her put up a, a permanent house for the family. They are living in a semi-permanent and now she's raised her livelihood and now she's enticing other farmers to get into planting bamboo, setting up nurseries. And so it's from those examples that we'll be able to, to, to raise and enhance the bamboo growing and that story. Nimejulikana kama mama vivi kutoka Butler subcount kijiji ni Bumanyi village. Hapa ndio nyumbani. Nilianza mwaka wa 2017 kulikuwa na mfanyakazi mmoja wa Eco Green na kunifunza jinsi ya kupanda bambu vile wanatengeneza udongo pamoja na mbolea na kukata nikiweka kwa tubes kwa makaratasi hapo sikukuwa na pesa nikaongea na mzee wangu vile mfanyakazi wa Eco Green alinieleza akasema ni sawa akantumia kidogo alicho nacho tukaanzia hapo kupanda bambu tu wakati kulikuwa na kiangazi na hiyo bambu ilimaliza karibu mwaka mzima kabla ijapata soko ilikaa hapa lakini siku moja hao tu watu wafanyakazi wa Eco Green wakaniletea customer na nikauza hiyo bambu hiyo siku yote wakabeba zote wakaniachia hapa fedha hiyo fedha ndio niliendelea nayo mpaka saa hii ninauza seedling kwa watu wa Eco Green ndio wananiletea customer nikiwauzia wana kijiji pia na wauzia hata hata wengine nawapea bure kwa sababu nawaambia wapande bambu kwa shamba bambu ina mazingira mema kwa sababu kama ume, umezipanda kwa shamba sasa vile hii maji ya haiwezi beba udongo inasindilia wenzangu nawaambia wawe wakipanda bambu kwa sababu hata kama sio kupanda kwa nini kwa shamba wao wakipanda hizi sibili pia waweze kuuza na watapata kusaidika kama mimi hii tunaita tray tray naweza tengenezea mchele au ndengu hii iko sawa na iwezi hata toboka kuna kinu hapa naweza twanga nayo njugu na iwezi toboka hata chini eh, ni mzito sio ukue na kubwa sana ndio upande bambu hizo ya seedling tutakuwa tuna space kama kota alafu unapanga hizo seedling zako na baada ya hizi seedling ukizipa uki ukienda upate hiyo hiyo mbegu ya bambu ukije upande baada ya wiki mbili zitaanza kutoa shoot zikisha shoot hivyo asita shoot zote tena zingine zitakuva zingine zitakuwa zikisha maliza mwezi moja unaanza kusipangua kubwa na ndogo naendelea tu kuzimwagilia maji baada ya wiki ya miezi tatu ama ine zitakuwa tayari kupata soko nimepata faida kutoka kwa bambu ya kwanza nilikuwa na watoto kwa shule bambu ilimsaidia watoto wakasoma sasa hii wako university kwa hiyo bambu ya pili Nyumba hii ni ya bambu.
Uh, my name is Nelly Odwar and I work for the Kenya Forest Research Institute and I'm based at the National Forest Products Research Program where I'm the program um, director. Uh, on top of that, uh, I'm also managing a Dutch Sino uh, East African Bamboo Development Program uh, that is being coordinated from uh, INBA, um, that's the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization. And I've been uh, the national project coordinator for the country. And this project is being run, uh, it's been implemented in actually Ethiopia, Uganda, and Kenya. We're grateful for the Dutch government and the Chinese government who are funding it. Uh, since uh, 2016, we are now actually on the second phase, which began uh, in April. We're grateful for that support. And um, we've seen bamboo being a very uh, interesting plant. And uh, in Kenya, we only have one indigenous uh, bamboo, and that's what we commonly call the, the, the highland bamboo. The highland bamboo is ra right now called Uldin Aldinia alpina. And this is found in altitudes of 2,300 meters above sea level up to about 3,300 meters above sea level. So it's mainly in our water towers. That's Mount Kenya, the Abadeas, Cherengani, the Mao Ranges, Mount Elgon. And if you know very well, those are areas that are under conservation uh, areas, protected areas, the public areas which are uh, under the Kenya Forestry, uh, Kenya Forest Service. Um, in the early uh, 80s, the president, uh, late um, uh, President Moy, he put a ban on, on exploiting bamboo, the natural bamboo. And that was to safeguard our water towers. And uh, KEFRI, which was established in 1986, that is not to say research on forestry had not been done. It used to be done under agriculture. It's over 50 years before then. Uh, and um, we had an interest on continuing with, with issues on bamboo. And what we realized that other than our indigenous bamboo, there are other bamboos that grow in lower altitudes. And uh, Kefri was able to, to import um, about 20 or so species to try them out in different agroecological regions. And this was because we saw the importance of bamboo. And, uh, and also to safeguard our natural bamboo, which was being exploited slightly, uh, mainly by the locals around there who would use it for fencing and firewood. And then for some, they were supporting horticultural uh, industry in providing uh, plant props. So what Kefri did is that we tried out 20 species, um, which we, we got seeds and, um, and offsets, which were from either Asia or even Africa. Um, and India, and we've tried them out. And about 13 or so of them are doing pretty well in different agroecological areas, the coastal area, the lake region, uh, the, the highlands uh, uh, west of, you know, um, the Rift Valley as well. They're doing pretty well. And that's what now we started doing. And my name is Gordon Sigu. I'm also a research scientist with Kefri. For a long time, I've been based in Muguga. I had a short stint at the ministry, and then recently now I've been transferred to Masemi. Well, uh, Kefri has been undertaking research uh, on bamboo for quite some time. And uh, just to take you back, I think in the beginning, 1945, already there was a lot of uh, interest developing on bamboo. And, and why so? It's because we were clearing areas that had naturally growing bamboo, especially in the in the highlands, and replacing some of those areas with tea, uh, the exotic plantations like cypress, pines, and that uh, there was interest in looking at the water, the water use uh, 
bamboo vis-a-vis -vis tea, and even they introduce species like pines, cypresses, and the eucalypt. So study started then, 1945. Of course, you could see way back in 1945, there was already a lot of interest on, on bamboo and looking at its importance in water, soil and water conservation. And then of course, uh, for a long time people were using bamboo mainly for fencing. Fencing homesteads in the city, especially in Nairobi, posh homesteads then used fence, uh, bamboo as, as a fence. And then, of course, this moved on, and way back in 1986, there was a feeling that uh, we were not harvesting whatever we were using sustainably, and of course, almost threatening the, the ecosystem where bamboo is growing. We have one local species of bamboo that is indigenous to this country, is Highland bamboo. The name has changed a lot. Initially, Arudinari and Pina, later Yushani Alpina, the latest now Aldinia Alpina. This is the indigenous bamboo that is growing in the, mainly the five main water towers of the country, talking of Mount Elgon, uh, Mau Escarpment, the Mount Kenya, the Abadea Ranges. It's, it's, it's the main local species. Most of these other species that you see around have been introduced. So because of that fear, that this was not being harvested sustainably. Uh, there was an imposed uh, ban, you know, on harvesting bamboo. Sometimes, way back in 1986. Then, of course, people still wanted to use bamboo, and Kefri now was challenged. And when we looked around, you know, locally within the region and globally, we realized that uh, there were other species of bamboo that could grow on lower elevations. The local species is limited in the range where it grows. It grows in high elevations, stocking of 2,400 meters above sea level up to 3,000 plus. We realized that uh, looking around within the region and globally that there are other local species that could thrive even in lower elevations. So sometimes uh, early 90s or late 80s, we teamed up with the. Uh, Inba then was just being conceptualized. And then, then we teamed up with them through IDRC and we were able to introduce about 22 different species. And these species we were testing across the region. We started right from the coast the highland areas of Muguga, around Kinale also, we did some trials. And then, uh, of course, trials took us all the way to Penon, Captagat. And then, of course, here at Maseno, we tried a few species. And one farmer in Siaya, Tabeda, was able to give us a small piece of land. So we also did some testing of the species there, and also in Kakamega. So we, of course, then we were looking at which species can, can grow where. Out of the introduced species, 22 of them, we noticed that uh, half of them performed in very well in various uh, ecological zones. And uh, these are some of the species that we've been trying to you know, promote. Then, of course, when we were doing this, there, there wasn't so much interest on, on bamboo, given that we were still fairly adult with a lot of you know, timber resources here and there, wood materials. But then, of course, this has been dwindling with time, so people have been exploring alternatives, and, and bamboo became fairly handy, given that its growth rate compared to trees, is, it, it grows fairly fast. And that has been the, the interest. Of course, when you are doing the production, parallel to that, we were also trying side by side to promote use uses of bamboo. Unfortunately, in the, generally in Africa, unlike Asian countries, China, India, people have a culture with, the, with bamboo in those countries. The Asians have a culture, and through that, they've been able to you know, develop uses, develop techniques for molding bamboo into 
into you know products that are value added, which unfortunately is not same in, in, in Africa generally. And of course, we are talking of our country, Kenya. You could see, you know, bamboo used for fencing to the Asian community. Just plating bamboo and using it as raw is not value adding. Actually, to them, it's like waste. And uh, so far, of course, 1986, I've come up to early, early, early 90s. That's when we did we did the trials. The trials are there still, and uh, we've been assessing them. And for now, of course, there are some species that we can recommend for various ecological zones with confidence. If, for example, one wanted to grow a particular species of bamboo in the drier region, we could, for example, recommend uh, the lowland bamboo of Sitanathera abyssinica originally from Ethiopia, but it's also introduced here. If you wanted to go to higher elevations, obviously we would encourage you to grow uh, Oldinia lupina, the local species of bamboo. There are other species like Bambusa vulgaris that grows in fairly wide ecological, ecological zones. A scientist in Kefri, uh, Rift Valley Ecological Research Program. Um, we we do research in uh, forestry and other natural uh, related natural resources. And uh, this center has a strength in forest productivity and improvement, among other thematic areas. Bamboo has been one of our species we've been focusing on for. Um, uh, forest uh, forest related products like uh, furniture and uh, uh, hand tools and, and and it's been versatile that's why we've really been encouraged to use its potential to to cover for the gaps we have in forestry uh, so far uh, we've done research in site matching we've uh, managed to uh, put uh, map them with, to know where they they can really perform uh, we've done some research on propagation, on which one had the best propagation method for the varied bamboo species. Uh, so the species we focused on is the vulgaris, bambusa vulgaris, um, uh, the alpine bamboo, that is the most native in Kenya. And if it were, if we could uh, go further, we could go into uh, now the uh, micro propagation of bamboo. So we were we can upscale what we have uh, to improve the productivity of this bamboo species, even the germplasm, to make sure we have enough germplasm for multiplication and expansion of uh, this resource. Uh, the uptake of bamboo in the region, I can say it's been good because uh, through uh, we've, we've used the GOK funds uh, one time to uh, train youth. We trained youth in Olenkuroni. Like we've so far, we've done over 20 uh, training for artisanry. We've also trained women and uh, vulnerable people on uh, uh, nursery establishments for their own uh, economic empowerment policy. Now, apart from supporting farmers, our major milestone is as Kefri. Uh, we managed to draft a bamboo policy last year, that is 2019. It has, it is a major guide in, uh, plantation establishment of uh, resource use uh, bamboo. Like the entire thing has been covered in that policy, and we're also happy as an institute. Uh, just recently, the uh, uh, president through his cabinet. Uh, included bamboo as a scheduled crop, so bamboo has been featured in the Crop Act 2013. My name is Victor Mwanga. I am the chairman of the Bamboo Association of Kenya. The Bamboo Association of Kenya is an association that brings together 
different players in the bamboo sector in Kenya. The bamboo value chain is uh, a real long value chain because uh, it starts from the point where you're looking at establishing the right species for bamboo in which region and at what uh, objective of growing the bamboo. And then from there you go to the actual nursery establishment. From the nursery establishment you go to the planting and then the management of the plantation and then the harvesting, then post-harvesting activities, and then value addition in whatever uh, place that you want to use your bamboo for. It could be for domestic use, it could be for a small cottage uh, industry, or it could be for large manufacturing concerns. So the Bamboo Association of Kenya was registered in the year 2018 as uh, an association through the state law department. But before that, a lot of farmers had come together under a coalition called the Kenya Bamboo Pioneers Network, which was basically a loose uh, coalition of bamboo farmers bringing together farmers, nursery operators, small value addition uh, workshops, and scholars and academicians. And we thought that it was important for us to have a legal entity that would be able to champion the cause of bamboo in this country. And so that is what metamorphosize from being a network into a full-fledged association registered by the state law office in Kenya. So we are here today having been uh, in operation for the last two years just to look back and ask ourselves what strides have we made since we were registered as an association. So. Um, just looking at what our main objective is, a lot of people in this country know bamboo, but what do they use bamboo for? And where is the bamboo available? Because today when you talk about bamboo in Kenya, it's mostly associated with the bamboo in the Abadeas, the bamboo in Mount Kenya, the bamboo in Cherengani, and so on and so forth. But when you look at the crop, and just so that we identify and know that bamboo has been in the lives of this country for generations. There are local names for bamboo. For instance, the Kikuyu call it Mirangi. The Luos call it Modi. The Kalenjins call it Tegat. The Luyas call it uh, Bidundu. So that means that bamboo has been part and parcel of our life. And even we have a Swahili name for bamboo, Mianzi which means that bamboo was at the coast at zero meters above sea level and bamboo was also uh, in those many years ago uh, predominant in very high altitude levels like the 2400, 2500, 3000 meters above sea levels in Mount Kenya, in Abadeas, in Cherengani, in Mount Elgon. So what does it tell us about uh, this crop? It is a crop that has been entrenched in our tradition. We used it before, our forefathers used it, but because of land uh, pressure and because of the ease of use of bamboo, the resource was actually used to a point where it no longer exists in some community, though the name does exist. So it is this, based on this, that we said, if this crop has been there with us, why is it taking uh, a backstage Unlike other crops that have come into this country, like sugarcane was introduced, like maize was introduced, like tea was introduced, coffee was introduced. What about this resource that we've had for all these years and yet it doesn't get any recognition? So again, um, our main objective was to reintroduce bamboo back into our communities and into our culture into our history so that we can then look at what is it that we can do with bamboo.
I'm Kara Karioki, and I'm a Mondu entrepreneur. Um, I've been running Greenport for the last six years, since 2014, as a chief executive and co-founder. Um, my history dates back, I've been a banker for more than 20 years, and uh, a social entrepreneur for the last 15 years. Firstly in the mortgage sector, and then now to totally committed to Bamboo. You know, actually Bamboo happened on us. They talk about the story where Bamboo grows on you, and before you know it, it's running in your veins. Our chairman, he's called Mr. Mundia, has young adult children, and these kids were not saving. So when they got their first jobs, he then encouraged them to have delayed gratification by planting a forest with him. And in that way, as a family, they could then get a lot more money after 10 years. And that time, everybody was growing eucalyptus for KPLC. So then he realized that so many people would want to do good and make money at the same time. So that's how Greenport was born. So we started then buying large tracts of land and subdividing them as an investment opportunity. And it was so interesting because in the first three months, we sold 64 acres of bamboo forest. And it was shocking because, you know, how is it possible that people want to do that kind of investment? Everybody needs to diversify their investments. People wanted to secure their retirement. People wanted to get, you know, to pay their kids college fees or high school fees. And that's how Greenport grew. But from the very beginning, we were very clear that we wanted to do this differently. I've grown up in a family where I was educated in Alliance Girls using the money from coffee. And today my mother has uprooted that coffee because it no longer makes financial sense. So from the beginning, we were very, very keen to make sure that we can see the whole value chain through, to ensure that we're growing the right seedlings. So we started Greenport Nurseries to make sure that we have the right quality of seedlings to do the right quality of products at the end. We are managing director of Iwasanyiro South Development Authority, and uh, as you say, we have been actively uh, for the last three years or so, uh, been trying to restore the more forest. And uh, part of what we have been doing is to restore it through uh, bamboo. Uh, today here we <coughs> we are having a meeting with Kenya Forest Services to see how we can advance the partnership that we've had with them. Uh, one, on uh, restoration of the Mao forest, but also two, on uh, bamboo propagation, uh, propagation. So that is what why we are here. But the reason behind uh, the whole issue of bamboo commercialization is to look at it from a value addition perspective. And that's why we are bringing farmers on board. Ultimately, our plan is to have or to establish a value addition center or a factory if you would wish to add value into the bamboos that we will have now planted around the Mao and uh, had farmers come into it. So but, um, ultimately what we want is to add value into bamboo uh, through manufacturing of various items, tissues, furniture, all those kind of things. So at the end farmers we will, will take up this because they will know that at the end they would have something that will add value into this bamboo. I'm Nicholas Awando, the chairman for Rivanyando Water Resource Users Association. 
River Nyando was started in the year 2007 following the Water Act of 2002. Today we have 200 members of which we have divided some people to go in the, in the Nandi subcatment to form another rua. And right now we have over 120 members. The main activities that we have been involved that we are involved in is planting trees along the River Nyando banks to reduce soil erosion. And the most important tree species that we planted recently is the bamboo, which has done very well following the Levem 2 project that we had in 2012. Today most of our bamboos are fully overgrown but we have not covered the area adequately because we did not have adequate resources. Uh, after the Levem 2 project, after this time, we are happy that one of us, Madam Wendy, called us to join her in bamboo production in river, along River Nyando subcatchment. Following our joining the Moonlight Initiative, early this year, we have done training in bamboo propagation. The TOT has also been taught to teach others. And right now, we have also trained other members and we have, what we have done most is again is uh, to make sure that we are extending bamboo to other communities so that members of the community can now grow bamboo. Initially we thought bamboo was just for catchment but from the training we knew that bamboo can alleviate poverty of the community. So right now we want to grow bamboo as a catchment, as a restoration plant and also as a, as a commercial crop. In the training that we had recently, we were told species that are good for commercial purposes and species that are good for catchment restoration. Right now, if we go along the Vanyando, you will see that we have a lot of bamboo, like this one we have here around. Bamboo, one thing that we have discovered in subcatchment management control to control the soil erosion is that the roots of the bamboo normally stick the soil particles together and the eddy current of the flowing water cannot take away the soil to cause erosion of the riverbank. So it is one of the best plants for riverbank protection. Mimi kwa majina naitwa Francisca Okochili. Mimi ni mwenye shamba. Eh, zaidi ya yote nimeona ili shida imenikaba paka imenifanya nilibe ukulima nyumba nyuma nikiwa na stress ya kwamba ningilima ili hiyo chakula naweza kuporomosha tena jezi liporomosha eh, last year. Sasa sasa hizi vile niko hapa hata niko na stress juu ya hizo nyumba yenye vijana walijenga juzi. Ningasema sasa mtajenga hata yangu nimeshindwa kutengeneza. Ninaona tu naweza promosha mara moja sababu inaona kama inaelekea nyumbani huko hasa hii shida ilianzia around 2005 sasa so, naona hiyo shida ni kama imezidi tumesahi tumepanda bambu karibu mara tatu sasa so, tunapanda ndani tunapanda juu tunaona tu hiyo mvua ikikuja ikizidi hata huko chini vile tulianza kupanda tulipanda paka tukazuia ingine na miti miti hivi ili zizi promosho tukaona hizo juu zilikuwa zinakauka juu ya hii mchanga mchanga Uh, the future is um, that we intend to put as much as possible, as many or as many acres as possible under bamboo plantation, because we would want farmers to benefit from the bamboo plant, and we expect that so many other things that are made of bamboo that we otherwise would have been imported would be made here in the country. So we expect that uh, the offtake would be a bit higher uh, towards 
maybe the third or towards the fourth year. I think the biggest challenge has been uh, uh, the legal challenge because, as you know, sometimes in the 80s, bamboo as a plant was banned from harvesting. And uh, that came with, uh, you know, people creating some kind of hands-off approach of not wanting to engage in bamboo farming. So as and when we get off that uh, legal challenge, then it would be easier. With that, it comes um, with the uh, despondency of people not wanting to put up something because they really don't know what the end result is going to be. But uh, we are engaging with other stakeholders to ensure at least that we have uh, we have the legal instruments that support bamboo farming. Once we have that in place, then it will be easier because people will start looking at it from a cash crop perspective other than a banned uh, plant. Hello Kenya, my name is Wendy Omanga and I'm the founder of Moonlight Initiative which is a youth-led sustainability and circular economy consultancy. As you can see, we are here in Busia, in a gully where soil erosion has really taken place and uh, it is our job to sustain it through bamboo by planting bamboo along uh, the gully since uh, there's a lot of silting which is taking place. Our call to action, we are calling all institutions and the private citizens to come and join us in donating bamboo seedlings to this community so that they are able to mitigate negative effects of climate change by planting them along the river banks. We also welcome other bamboo technologies and um, other resources such as gabions so that we can help these people mitigate negative effects of climate change. We have a treatment tank, but this treatment tank has a lot of challenges because the number of poles that we can be able to treat at a time are much lower. And also, the treatment time is quite long, so you are able to treat a, a very few poles at a much longer time. So we, we, were, we will be very grateful if we get a, an advanced treatment plant because uh, we have a lot of farmers. We have over 500 farmers who have bamboo. And these bamboos, we are anticipating that in future, we will be able to have a lot of them at our site for treatment. If we get a bigger treatment plant, that we can be able to, to treat at least more poles in a, in, a less, in a less time, much fewer time, then uh, it will be a very added advantage to us as Eco Green. Um. It took me a long time to get to know the right species that does not get affected by, by, by insects. That was one. Though you might find bamboos uh, which are a bit infected in different areas because, again, we source our bamboos from different stations. The chemicals that are used, if you soak them, they don't penetrate directly to the core of the joint. But if you use pressure, it penetrates easily than boiling the bamboo. Number two, let us also understand that bamboo is a bit sensitive to heat. So you put bamboo in, 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 a, in, a, con, in a confined uh, pressure or heat, it bursts. So people have tried that method of treating them like the normal poles, but you find it cannot sustain the pressure or the heat. So most people uh, don't get it right. But if you use pressure, it's more easier, cheap, and, and faster way of treating those bamboo. Uh, we, we are currently dealing with the small scale uh, uh, mass production. It's very small, as you've seen our workshop, but we're trying to reach because, again, we are afraid of, of, of overwhelming uh, orders because of that final touch of, of our product 
as you've seen, our products are very, like finally are very, are very good. So we don't want to go out there and give half-baked product because only we want to reach so many people. But we are based in Eldoret, uh, Kips Plaza, and uh, we are working with different uh, organizations and different uh, entities, Kenya Forest, Carefree, and uh, other entities that are closely working with the, with the, with the forest department. Yes. We're looking at the future of bamboo industry right now. We're thinking of also the, um, the environmental aspect. We've got a lot of degraded areas and they've been mapped with KFS. Those are some of the areas we are looking at. The river runs, protecting our river banks. And we've got studies that are, are now setting up in terms of um, how does the bamboo interact with the water and the soil? Does it take up a lot of water and how much water does it transpire it and it gets back into the land those are studies that we are getting into as carefree but so far in terms of protecting the riverbanks they are doing pretty well we have an example right here in michuki park where the bamboos were planted eight years ago the river didn't eat into the land but where there was no bamboo the river just curved itself and and you know so that's why we've, we've had a lot more bamboo growing, uh, planting along uh, Nairobi River within the Michuki Park. And this is just actually to show how can the river, uh, how can the bamboo help in terms of uh, river rain protection. The other thing is that we are looking at uh, a study of uh, fertile remediation. What does that mean? Bamboo has the ability of lifting out heavy metals. We have a study that was set up along Ruai to see, because our rivers, after an expose that was done some time, when was that study done? On the, on, the, on, the, um, on the Nairobi River, from the beginning up to the coast. A lot of effluent has gone into the rivers, whether it's from domestic or factory. So it has high levels of heavy metals. Bamboo can also be grown to, to see how it can reduce and lift out some of those um, heavy metals from the from, from the rivers and, and the soils. Uh, so those, those are the environmental uh, benefits of bamboo. Um, it's evergreen, so the carbon sequestration is amazing. That is something that we have worked on and it's comparable with trees per hectare. Um, and, and that's where we are promoting bamboo. But we're not saying we, we are replacing tree growing because we still have an industry for trees, industrial timber. So we still need our cypresses and our pines. But where we can grow bamboo as an alternative is where we are looking at. Our lives are dynamic. Look at what COVID has done us, you know, the last six months. We have totally changed the way we do thinking and doing uh, activities. We are having meetings online. So it's the same thing as evolving. We need to evolve with specific products. The bamboo is one of them. And we, can, we are not saying we are replacing trees. But where we can grow bamboo, it can also it can be able to offer livelihoods for farmers. It can offer uh, for supporting industries for making the products that we are importing. We can be a net exporter even just from East Africa. Uh, the Ethiopians are way ahead of us. Uh, they started the bamboo agenda slightly earlier, um, and now they're even going to have a training center in, in Ethiopia. So not only will they just train the Ethiopians, but it will be in the region. Uh, in terms of the future of bamboo, the future of bamboo is very bright, but we can't get there in a day. The government is working towards promoting bamboo, carefully is the front frontline. A, no a number of private initiatives are also going on. 
So the future of our good bright. Uh, even another five to ten years, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of access to enable us to process at a industrial scale. Bamboo has a very bright future in, in this country, especially, because uh, now environment has become very, very sensitive. We've, uh, we've seen uh, during uh, heavy rains, you know, the flooding that, that takes place in some of our rivers and even streams. So if then most of those river rains, you know, people planted bamboo, this will be able to stabilize those, uh, the, the, the river rains and also filter the water so that uh, eventually, you know, the kind of water that you get is not water that is heavily, heavily polluted. So in terms of conservation, bamboo is, is very key. In terms of livelihoods, Bamboo can engage quite a number of youth. I know in this country we have a real issue with youth employment. And uh, bamboo is, a, unlike timber, is a poor man's resource. Because uh, you don't need to establish huge plantations of bamboo. Just a clamp within a compound or just in the neighborhood of your homestead is able to, you, you can, from that, you can do basketry you can do maps, you can do, you know, basic household items. And this one, you'd be able to sell and, and make money. At industrial level, generally we would encourage, you know, people to uh, process bamboo, primary processing at the source, at the plantation, before moving it to secondary processing. In that, that primary processing alone, you can engage a lot of uh, you know, youth because based on the final product that you'd want to get from your materials, you can semi-process them at the site and that way you'd have engaged so many you know, youths, young guys to do that semi-processing. Of course, they can do it with basic machines and if those are not available, just Ordinary tools like the machetes that we have can also be able to do that. So that way you can, and of course, you move now to secondary processing at, at industrial level. There again, obviously, you'll be able to engage quite a number of people to be able to, to do that.